Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Wayne Canning and I'll be your host for this Ocean Navigator Magazine Voyaging Tips video. Over the last 50 years there have been many innovations that have made sailing easier and safer and one of these has been the advent of roller furling head sails. Roller furling head sails has made it possible for the average cruiser or offshore sailor to sail easily single-handed. And because the crew no longer has to go forward on a pitching deck, it's also made sailing safer. Roller furling is also one of those pieces of equipment that doesn't need a whole lot of maintenance, which makes it even better. That said, roller furling does require some maintenance if you want it to be safe and reliable. It's always a good idea to do a quick inspection of your roller furling system before any offshore passage. And even for a coastal cruiser, you're going to want to check over your system at least a couple of times a year to make sure that there's no problems. One of the first things you want to look at, and probably one of the most potentially dangerous problems, is the furling line itself, the line that goes into the drum. If this line fails, the sail could open fully up under the worst conditions. It also can make it very difficult to bring the sail in when you need to. So for this reason, we want to look it over fairly carefully. We want to make sure that our lead-in angle to the drum is good. We want to make sure that it's coming in at about a 90 degree angle to the drum. And we also want to make sure that it's not chafing on the drum or any other parts nearby. You want to follow it all the way back to the cockpit and make sure that it's not binding or chafing on anything. You want to check all the blocks and fair leads that it goes through. Friction on this line can make furling your sail more difficult than it needs to be. And often when people have problems bringing their sail in or complain that it's too difficult to bring the sail in, it's because of friction on the furling line. You also want to make sure that there's enough turns on the drum. I see this a lot. People don't put enough turns on the drum. You need to consider that you may be furling the sail when there are heavy winds. Therefore the sail will furl tighter which means it will require more turns on the drum to bring it fully in. I always recommend that you furl the sail fairly snugly, keeping a little bit of tension on the sheet as you pull it in. You want to have about six to eight wraps of the sheet around the furled sail when you're done. Next, you want to check the drum itself. You want to make sure that it rotates freely and that there's no friction anywhere on it. Turn it a full 360 degrees and feel how the bearings feel. Make sure the cover is not chafing on anything and that everything turns smoothly. Most bearings on roller furling systems are going to be Darylin type bearings. A few manufacturers will use steel or stainless steel bearings. For maintenance on most units, all you need to do is rinse them down with fresh water every now and then. Dirt and salt crystals will get into the top and into the bearings and a little bit of rinsing down with fresh water will help take care of this problem. Once you've inspected the furling line and the drum itself, the next area you want to look at is up at the top of the furling unit. This is where a lot of problems occur and where a lot of people get into trouble. You want to make sure that the upper swivel is in good condition and you want to make sure that the halyard leads away from the swivel at a 5 to 10 degree angle. If the halyard comes up parallel to the foil or the, or the stay, it's possible that the halyard can wrap around the foil causing what they call halyard wrap and this would cause your, your sail to bind up and it may be impossible to either unfurl it or furl it if this happens. This can also damage your forestay. So you want to make sure that you don't have any problems with halyard wrap. So what's the best way to inspect it? You can look up there with a pair of binoculars and see if everything looks okay. This is good for a casual quick check, but you really want to be able to look at the swivel carefully and make sure it's in good condition and also rinse it out with fresh water from time to time. There's really only two ways to do this. One, you can climb up the mast and look at it up there, or you can drop the sail. I tend to like to drop the sail from time to time. The reason for this is it gives me an opportunity to inspect the sail itself and it also gives me an opportunity to inspect the foils. It pays to inspect the foils from time to time because the foils have joints in them. Most foils are going to be about five to eight feet in length and they're coupled together. 
these couplings can be a problem. I've seen screws and, and rivets back out of the connections in the foil. So it helps to inspect that every now and then. You also want to make sure there aren't any bends or kinks in the foil. These can often be hidden by the sail itself. So dropping the sail tends to be a good thing to do. When you drop the sail, inspect the luff tape fairly carefully. Make sure the stitching's in good condition and that there's no chafing. Obviously look for any damage at the head and the tack of the sail. Once the sail's out of the way, sight up the foils and make sure that they look straight. It also helps to take a pair of binoculars out and look at each foil joint. This will indicate if there's any loose fasteners or separation of the joints which could cause problems. With the swivel and halyard down on deck, inspect the halyard. They often get a lot of chafe on the halyards right as it turns the block and it stays up there for a long time. Check the swivel. Make sure the swivel turns freely and that there's no binding in the bearings or anything. You also want to check the shackles holding the sail and the top of the swivel. These shackles should be seized with wire or a wire tie so that they don't back out and come loose. These few and simple easy checks of your furling system will help maintain it in good working order and ensure that you don't have any problems with it once offshore. Well that concludes this Ocean Navigator Magazine's Voyaging Tips video. I hope you found it useful. If you have a voyaging tip you'd like to share with our readers, please let me know. Maybe I'll make a video out of it. Please check out Ocean Navigator Magazine's YouTube channel for more voyaging tips and sailing videos. Also, be sure to check out Ocean Navigator Magazine at your local newsstand and Ocean Navigator Magazine online. Until next time, I'm Captain Wayne, wishing you fair winds and following seas.